The world that surrounds us consists of countless particles, spanning from atoms composing the air we breathe to the cells constituting our bodies. Yet, what constructs these particles, and how do they engage with one another? On a macroscopic scale, our bodies appear as a combination of cells collaborating to form tissues, organs, and ultimately the entire organism. However, upon closer inspection, each cell comprises numerous particles, including protons, nutrients, and electrons. Zooming in further reveals that protons and nutrients are, in turn, composed of quarks. In essence, the entire universe can be viewed as an extensive assembly of quarks and various subatomic particles, all interacting through the fundamental forces of nature. This intricate arrangement becomes even more notable when considering the universe's history, from its origin in the explosive Big Bang to its continuous expansion and evolution. Despite the tumult and upheaval witnessed in the universe, the fundamental laws of nature have remained the same, providing a steadfast foundation for the emergence and progression of life. Recently, famous physicist Brian Cox discussed what is the purpose of the universe and how one can find their place within it. So, why does the universe seem so perfect? What is its purpose, and what is our place within it? That's the topic for today's video. That in, in our galaxy, 400 billion suns, uh, there's just us that thinks, right? There may be microbes all over the place, but in terms of things that mm. think and can feel and in a very real sense bring meaning to the universe, all these things we've talked about, the beauty of these galaxies, they're not beautiful if there's nothing there to perceive them, right? They're just galaxies. So if that's it in this galaxy, then the decisions that we make now as a, as a civilization, have a galactic implications, right? If we destroy ourselves, for example, deliberately or through inaction, then it's possible that we eliminate meaning, perhaps forever, in a galaxy of 400 billion stars. And so that's it. I think that leads you to, it's, it's a good working assumption, that we have a tremendous responsibility, mm. in a sense, not to do that. Gazing at the night sky prompts a sense of awe at the seemingly flawless nature of the universe. Every element appears to have been intricately crafted, from the vast expanse of galaxies and stars in the celestial realm to the interconnected systems governing the universe's dynamics. The pinnacle of this perfection reveals itself in the delicate balance of physical constants that facilitate the possibility of life. The universe presents an astonishingly precise backdrop for life to unfold. The physical constants dictating the universe's behavior, ranging from the speed of light to the ratios of fundamental forces, appear meticulously adjusted to permit the emergence of life as we understand it. Any slight deviation in these constants would render the universe inhospitable, incapable of supporting the intricate chemical reactions and biological processes vital for life. This level of precision prompts contemplation about the reasons behind the universe's perfection. How do these physical constants attain such precise calibration to enable life's emergence? Does the universe's perfection serve a purpose, or is it merely a coincidence? Once, people worldwide held the belief that the universe comprised a flat Earth surrounded by the Sun, the Moon, and the stars. As time passed, ancient astronomers observed certain stars deviating from the general motion, realizing that some were, in fact, planets. Gradually, astronomers acknowledged the Earth's spherical shape and devised reasoned explanations for the celestial body's behavior. By classical antiquity, scientists had developed concepts explaining the planet's movements and the arrangements of heavenly bodies. For approximately 1400 years, the prevailing belief was that Earth occupied the central position, with the sun, moon, planets, and stars orbiting around it, a perspective known as the geocentric model. Around 380 BC, astronomer Eudoxus crafted the initial model depicting a geocentric universe. This Earth-centered model of the universe persisted throughout much of human history, but it faced challenges. Ancient astronomers observed planets exhibiting retrograde motion, moving backward in the sky at times. To account for this, they devised increasingly intricate models involving crystal spheres and small circles. Ptolemy later refined this theory, proposing that the Earth, a sphere at the center of the universe explained the equal division of stars above and below the horizon. 
However, in the 16th century, Polish mathematician and astronomer Nicholas Copernicus introduced a significantly different model of the universe. His heliocentric model positioned the Sun at the solar system's center, with Earth and other planets orbiting around it. Copernicus's ideas faced resistance initially, challenging the established beliefs and defying the authority of the Catholic Church. Despite this, observations by Galileo and others gradually affirmed the heliocentric model, becoming the predominant view in the scientific community. In the 20th century, technological advancements revolutionized our ability to explore the cosmos. Astronomers, armed with increasingly larger telescopes, discovered that the Sun is just one among billions of stars in our Milky Way galaxy. Moreover, the Milky Way is merely one of potentially trillions of galaxies in the observable universe. The awareness of our insignificance in a vast universe expanded further. Through the contributions of scientists like Edwin Hubble, it was revealed that the universe not only spans widely, but is also undergoing expansion. This revelation led to the formulation of the Big Bang Theory, proposing that the universe originated from a colossal explosion 13.8 billion years ago. All these findings prompt us to ponder, are we unique in the vastness of the universe? The answer appears to be a blend of yes and no. On one side, we represent just one species on a solitary planet within an immense and continuously expanding cosmos. Yet on the other side, these circumstances permitting our existence are exceedingly precise and uncommon. From the tilt of the Earth's axis to the exact positioning of the Moon, our planet and its surroundings align perfectly for life as we understand it. At times, we have to rely on the simplest assumptions, that however the universe operates, it did so in a manner conducive to giving rise to intelligent observers like us. This train of thought is known as the Anthropic Principle. No one disputes the existence of the universe, its adherence to fundamental laws, or that we, like everything else, adhere to these same rules. Our emergence is a natural process, implying that the universe must possess properties that, at the very least, make it conceivable, if not necessary, for intelligent living observers like us to emerge. The Anthropic Principle originated in 1973 when physicist Brandon Carter presented two statements. Firstly, we must acknowledge that our position in the universe is necessarily favorable for our existence as observers. The universe and its fundamental parameters must allow for the emergence of observers at some point. This is now referred to as the weak anthropic principle, asserting that the universe must support our potential existence. The second statement, the strong anthropic principle, suggests that without observers, the universe wouldn't be investigated. However, these interpretations overlook that probability is not absolute, but is relative to specific conditions. Once all conditions are in place, the probability of an event becomes either certain or impossible. Hence, the existence of life doesn't imply perfection in the universe. Additionally, relying solely on the anthropic principle to explain the universe's perfection neglects the fundamental scientific goal, understanding the natural processes that shaped our universe. Scientific inquiry seeks to uncover the mechanisms behind the current state of the universe, avoiding reliance on anthropic arguments to explain its properties. While the anthropic principles serve as a useful starting point to explore constraints on our universe's properties, it falls short of providing a comprehensive scientific explanation on its own. So, where does this position us? In the medieval era, thinkers pondered the universe and the origins of life. Seeger of Brabant, a 13th century philosopher born in modern-day Belgium, was one such intellect. His thesis, The Eternity of the World, delved into these questions. Associated with the radical Aristotelian movement in Paris, Seeger aimed to harmonize the teachings of the ancient Greek philosopher with Christian doctrine. This movement, led by figures like Averroes and Avicenna, sought to use philosophy to complement and deepen religious faith emphasizing the intersection of these perspectives. Sigurd drew significant inspiration from these thinkers, shaping a philosophy that underscored the importance of reason and the potency of human intellect. He asserted that philosophy served as a crucial complement to theology, contending that logical reasoning enhanced the comprehension of faith's truths. In his thesis on The Eternity of the World, Sigurd challenged the conventional notion of a definite beginning and creation of the universe. Instead, he posited that the universe existed indefinitely, eternal, and self-sustaining. According to Sigur, there was no initial human or first specimen of any species, and the physical universe lacked a primary starting point. Sigur's thesis stirred substantial controversy, 
fueling heated discussions among scholars and theologians of his era. Some deemed Sicker's ideas heretical, perceiving them as a threat to the Christian faith's foundation, while others viewed them as an opportunity to deepen their understanding of the world. Nevertheless, Sigger's concept of an eternal universe experienced a resurgence in the 20th century with the advent of the steady-state model. According to the steady-state model, the universe is deemed flawless because it has perpetually existed in a state of equilibrium and symmetry. New matter continually emerges to replenish what is lost as the universe expands. Formulated in 1948 by Fred Hoyle, Herman Bondi, and Thomas Gold, this theory is based on the perfect cosmological principle suggesting that the universe remains uniform not only on average throughout space, but also across time. In essence, regardless of when you observe the universe on average, the consistency persists. This forms the fundamental premise of the steady state theory. The universe is not just eternal, but timeless. According to this perspective, the universe has perpetually maintained a state of optimal equilibrium, with a precise balance of matter and energy required to sustain its expansion. This theory provides an explanation for the apparent perfection of the universe. Nevertheless, like other theories, it comes with its own set of complexities. Despite the theory's initial favor, even receiving support from Einstein, issues with the steady-state model surfaced in the 1950s and 60s. Astronomers encountered challenges with the theory when they observed the accelerated expansion of the universe, radio galaxies, and high-redshift quasars. The decisive blow to the steady-state theory came in 1965 with the identification of cosmic microwave background radiation. This faint background radiation permeates space uniformly in all directions, leading to the theory's downfall. This paved way for the Big Bang Theory, now widely regarded as the best explanation for the universe's origin. According to this theory, the universe expanded from an extremely hot, dense, and infinitesimally small point known as a singularity. In the Big Bang Theory, the irradiation serves as a relic or a snapshot from the early, hot stages of the universe, predicted even before its discovery. However, the steady-state theory struggles to account for the origin of this radiation. The concept that the universe originated from a single point was initially introduced in a scientific paper by Belgian cosmologist and Catholic priest George Lemaitre in 1931. Lemaitre suggested the existence of a primeval atom as the source of space and time. In 1927, predating this concept, he submitted a paper outlining his interpretations of Einstein's equations, leading him to the conclusion that the universe is expanding, with galaxy speeds proportionate to their distances. In 1929, Edwin Hubble presented updated data supporting the proportional relationship between galaxy distances and speeds. In 1964, George Gamow proposed the idea of the universe expanding and cooling from an initial state of infinite density and temperature. He suggested that all protons, nutrients, and electrons existed in this high-energy radiation ocean. While his calculations explained the relative abundances of hydrogen and helium, they didn't account for heavier elements. This raises a crucial question. Have the laws of nature remained consistent since the Big Bang approximately 13.8 billion years ago? In the 4th century, Aristotle posited that a primary objective of physics was to examine change. If the known laws of physics have undergone alterations over time, we can seek the reasons behind such changes and label them as laws of physics. If, in turn, these laws appear to shift, we can once again inquire about the underlying reasons. However, this continuous process is not anticipated to be infinite. Eventually, it will reach a conclusion, resulting in a physical theory independent of time. Any alteration in the fundamental forces of the universe would have catastrophic consequences. In our contemporary universe, we encounter gravity, electromagnetism, and the strong and weak nuclear forces. If any of these forces were to become constant, it's easy to envision the potential chaos that could unfold in the universe. If gravity were inconsistent, it would have widespread and potentially disastrous consequences. Making reliable predictions about the motion of objects on Earth, celestial orbits in our solar system, aircraft and spacecraft flight paths, and cosmic events like gravitational lensing and universe expansion would become extremely challenging. The same applies to the electromagnetic force. If it varied, electrons orbiting atomic nuclei would experience changes in their orbitals and energy levels, introducing uncertainty in the binding properties between electrons and different atoms. Essentially, every molecule in the universe would undergo fundamental alterations if the electromagnetic force changed. If this were to happen in regions with entities like humans, it would immediately lead to an unsustainable configuration. On Earth, 
life would promptly cease. Similarly, if the strong or weak nuclear force experienced changes, it would result in a rapid and severe catastrophe, leaving little time for us to comprehend the unfolding events. Unstable atomic nuclei would naturally undergo spontaneous decay, releasing a significant amount of energy as they transitioned into a more stable state. Atoms held together by bonds would lose their electrons, turning into ionized particles and giving rise to a plasma-filled region in the affected space. The consequences of such a disruption to the fundamental nuclear forces would be profound, making it challenging to fully grasp the extent of the resulting devastation. Our universe likely originated with irregularities, and any deviation from this scenario would have led to vastly different masses for those irregularities. If it were much smaller, there would be a lack of structure altogether. On the other hand, if it were significantly larger, the universe might have been overwhelmed by black holes from a very early stage. Crafting the universe we inhabit demands an exceptionally fortunate combination of circumstances. And fortunately, the one we have appears to be just right. We find ourselves in a universe conducive to life, allowing us to ponder such matters because, without it, we wouldn't exist to contemplate the intricacies. However, what if the precise configuration of our universe isn't extraordinary, considering the possibility of countless other universes with distinct physical constants and laws of nature? In 1952, Erwin Schrödinger delivered a lecture in Dublin, playfully cautioning his audience that his upcoming statement might sound unconventional. He asserted that when his equation appeared to depict multiple histories, these weren't alternatives, but actually occurred simultaneously. This phenomenon is termed superposition. According to David Deutsch, this marks the earliest known reference to many worlds, suggesting that all potential outcomes of quantum measurements manifest physically in some world or universe. Consider the observable universe as just a fraction of the cosmic expanse. Beyond our view, there exists more space, stars, galaxies, and everything else, potentially extending billions of light years beyond our reach. Furthermore, as vast as the unobservable universe is, there are countless more universes akin to it. Some might be larger and older, others smaller and younger, scattered throughout an even broader spacetime. The expansion of these universes is rapid and constant with space-time encompassing them expanding even more swiftly, ensuring their continual separation and preventing any collisions between them. This concept is the scientific notion of a multiverse. According to our current accepted scientific understanding, it's not just a plausible idea, it's an inevitable outcome of our fundamental laws. The multiverse concept originates from the physics essential to depict the universe we observe and inhabit today. As we explore the cosmos, we encounter an apparently boundless expanse of stars, galaxies, and cosmic structures extending across vast distances of space and time. The more we observe, the more we discover, leading to an increase in questions. Venturing to the outer limits of our observable capacity, we encounter the earliest stars in the universe and then a region of darkness beyond, where the only illumination comes from the lingering glow of the Big Bang. However, the Big Bang itself, occurring approximately 13.8 billion years ago everywhere, wasn't the commencement of space and time, but rather the commencement of our observable universe. Preceding that, there existed a phase known as cosmic inflation, where space expanded exponentially, filled with energy intrinsic to the fabric of space-time. In 2007, Nobel laureate Steven Weinberg proposed that if the multiverse is real, the chance of finding a logical explanation for the precise values of quark masses and other constants in our observed Big Bang is slim. According to Weinberg, these values would be happenstance, determined by the specific region of the multiverse we inhabit. The multiverse envisions vast universes, much larger than our observable parts, consistently forming in this exponentially expanding space. The idea is that there could be other universes where conditions are not conducive to intelligent life like ours, making our universe uniquely suitable for us. It's crucial to understand that the multiverse isn't a standalone scientific theory. It doesn't make predictions about observable phenomena within our own region of existence. Instead, the multiverse is a theoretical implication arising from the current understanding of the laws of physics. It's possibly an unavoidable outcome of those laws. If you have an inflationary universe guided by quantum physics, this is essentially what you're likely to end up with. In 1913, Lawrence Joseph Henderson significantly contributed to exploring the fine-tuning of the universe in his book, The Fitness of the Environment. A pioneering work, the book examined the crucial role of water and environmental conditions in supporting life. 
Henderson highlighted that the existence of life hinges entirely on Earth's specific conditions, especially the abundance and properties of water. Expanding on this groundwork, physicist Robert Dickey suggested in 1961 that the physical forces of the universe, encompassing electromagnetism and gravity, must be precisely adjusted to facilitate the flourishing of life. Similarly, in his 1984 book, The Intelligent Universe, Fred Hoyle contended that various non-biological factors seemed crucial for the presence of carbon-based life forms, including humans. In essence, the catalog of anthropic properties, apparent non-biological elements without which carbon-based life, and consequently human life, could not exist, is extensive and noteworthy. Beliefs in the fine-tuning of the universe prompted many to anticipate that the Large Hadron Collider would reveal indications of physics beyond the standard model, like supersymmetry. However, despite these expectations, by 2012, the Collider had not provided evidence of supersymmetry within the energy levels it could explore. Even with these contrasting theories, it's indisputable that our universe displays a notable degree of consistency and order. The consistency of the speed of light pervades every corner of the cosmos. The laws of thermodynamics govern everything from minuscule particles to expansive structures, and the delicate balance between the strong force and the electromagnetic force allows for the creation of stars and galaxies. A slight adjustment in the strengths of gravity and electromagnetism could disrupt the formation of stars and galaxies. Altering the masses of protons and neutrons, making the proton heavier, would hinder the stability of atoms. Tweaking these fundamental values might render the universe inhospitable to life. It's not a stretch to say it appears as if the parameters have been delicately tuned, almost as if the universe were fashioned to support our existence. So, what does this imply for us? It hints at the uniqueness of the universe and its operational principles. It gestures towards a purpose or meaning that transcends our individual lives and experiences. This realization prompts us to acknowledge that we are integral components of a vastly expansive and intricate tapestry, beyond our complete understanding. The next time you gaze up at the night sky, seize a moment to marvel at the flawless precision and unwavering regularity that define the universe. Allow this observation to prompt contemplation on the extraordinary mystery and beauty encapsulated in the world we inhabit and our position within the broader context of existence. As we reflect on our place within this grand cosmic narrative, it becomes evident that the universe, with its finely tuned constants and interwoven complexities, offers a canvas for awe and contemplation. The constancy of the speed of light and the delicate balance of forces underscore a meticulous orchestration that transcends our individual lives. We are, in essence, witnesses to the harmonious dance of celestial mechanics, each star and galaxy playing a part in the vast symphony of existence. This awareness invites a profound connection to the universe, urging us to recognize the intricate bonds that tie us to the cosmos. It's a reminder that our existence is not a mere coincidence, but a manifestation of cosmic conditions aligning with remarkable precision. Amidst the vastness of the cosmos, we find a sense of purpose and meaning, echoing through the eons. So, the next time the night sky unveils its celestial wonders, let the cosmic ballet inspire a sense of humility and wonder. Embrace the enigma and beauty of the world, acknowledging our role in the grand scheme of things, a part of the universe that contemplates itself marvels at its own intricacies, and seeks to understand the profound mystery that unfolds in the endless expanse of space. So, thanks for watching this video. We would love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Stay tuned for more content.